Hi everybody, Simon here again from Cooper's Trip Club and today I'll be showing you how to strip lacquer off a mahogany table. Our whole system is about no sanding. The person that made this table sanded it and the sanding is still there. We want to reuse it. the lacquer that's deep in the grain is all coming to the surface. So with the flusher you're spraying and you're scrubbing at the same time, you're not putting it on like the stripper and leaving it. And that is it. So we don't snap the legs off, so grab under there. And I made this table a very long time ago when I was late teens I think I made it for my parents. We want to just let the wood absorb what it wants. It's like skin care for wood. That is a moisturized surface. And you just feel this ground, just like silk. And everybody likes silk. This red one's our stripper. Very, very thin. Normal strippers are very thick. We make our stripper thin so that it absorbs rapidly. Our stripper is Virtually pH neutral. We don't want to damage the wood. We don't want to bleach it. Um, acids and alkali based strippers, they do more damage than anything. It's solid sapelli mahogany. Weighs a ton. See how it's really absorbing. Um, at the end of the table, it's still wet. And that's because over years and years of use, the sweat from arms and things and whatever has actually dissolved most of that finish away. But then the finish you know, it's all still original recipe up there. You can see I've got this shield, just a catch over spray. We're often asked, can you brush it? Which, yes you can, but I just don't like brushing because it takes too much time and it's really difficult to brush over top of the first coat of stripper. Now two or three light coats of stripper does not use a lot of product. This, this table, totally, which is a big table, will use somewhere between one and two liters for the whole, for the whole job. So it's not gonna use a lot of product. Now steel will come in, they come in these big rolls and you can just cut it off to whatever length you want. So. Normally, stripping a turned leg is pretty much nightmare stuff, but this is easy as. And the thing is, this is one of the only times we actually go cross grain, but when this leg was made, it was on a lathe and it was going cross grain. So I'm not doing anything different to when it was made. This is part two of the guide. The edge, we just grab a big chunk of wool. It's not easy to put a blade on there and that, so we just do this. We just literally scrub. I'm using a wider spatula today, and I always use a bit of an angle, and we just In this technique, you would use things like hollow core ply doors, where you've got big wide surfaces with a varnish. You could use it on wardrobes, chest of drawers, all those sort of big wide surfaces. The guide says remove the softened finish, and it's really just you choosing what's the most appropriate way. I like to always use a dragging action and just less chance of damaging the surface and remember the surface is already sanded. Part two, to um, strip what's in the surface. So when this was made, it was sanded and the very first coat of lacquer that went on 
soaked into the wood. And then all the other layers of lacquer that went on after that, they, um, they sort of laid on top. So that, when I was spatuling, spatularing, however that's pronounced, before, that's taken off all the stuff that's on the surface. Now I'm taking off what's in the wood. Now again, a stripper that's highly acid or alkali, this is when the wood gets destroyed or be bleached and all sorts of wonderful things. And that usually results in many hours of sanding. So I'll leave that now for a couple of minutes. And I'll go on to the leg again. So it's a sort of bit of a repeat the leg bit. So this will be, this coat of stripper will have gone into the grain. Flusher is part three. Its job is not to neutralize, but to rinse the surface clean. Rinse it clean of residues, of stripper, of lacquer, stain, anything that's soft, we want to get off the wood so that we don't have to sand it off. If you get the residues out of the grain, you then aren't going to be having the new finish get all destroyed. So, grab some rag. Now, the colour it is right now, when it's wet, is the colour it would be if you put a new clear finish on. Not a nuclear finish, a new clear finish. And that tells you, like when you look at that, you go, okay, I'm happy with that, that colour, I don't want it any darker, so you can choose whatever uh, finish you want. If you want uh, a darker finish, then you'd have to, to add stain to it. But that's sort of naturally aspirated, that's what the wood wants to be. So it's all good and wet still on the top, it's not dried out. So for the last five minutes it's been soaking in. So this is part two, stripper on, it says to leave it a couple of minutes but I've left it longer. Doesn't matter, the stripper isn't going to hurt it. And we just wet scrub with the wool and all the varnish, all the lacquer that's deep in the grain is all coming to the surface. If I've got a nice wet layer of mushy stripper there, then wipe it off first because that will reduce the amount of flusher that you'll use. Just show you these. So you've seen this before in other videos, but this is this uh, nylon-y type pad. And if you see the sparkle in there, um, that's the grit that's been put into it. So as I said before, this top is sanded by the person that made it. And by the look of it, they did a really good sanding job. And this flusher again. And we want the little needles of the grit to get into the sandpaper marks that are left in the wood. Any sanding leaves little scratches that's supposed to be there. So with the flusher you're spraying and you're scrubbing at the same time, you're not putting it on like the stripper and leaving it. If you use meths or thinners, they dry way too fast and in the cases like thinners, it just stinks. This is a virtually no odour. Now, as we said before on the leg, the wet look is the finish look. So while you do this, you're watching all the time for any blemishes that you might discover and dealing with them accordingly. So, on the guide it says spray scrub, spray wipe. As I'm wiping, you see I'll be turning the rag around onto clean surfaces to, um, it picks up all the goo and gets all that residue onto the rag rather than soaking deep into the grain where it could cause upsets for a new finish. So the, this rinsing phase is, this flushing phase is very important. 
It is the no sanding part of the game. And that is it. Yeah, in about half an hour, this will have dried. The rinse would have evaporated off and you'll be, it will come out a quite a pale color. And it's really important that you don't look at a blemish and suddenly think, oh, I better do a bit of sanding just in case. Um, what you'll do is cause a problem. You'll need then to sand the whole, the whole piece. If it looks good wet, then that's to be trusted. What we're doing here is we're partially sealing the timber. What we want to do is just to add a little bit of solid, a few solids to the actual uh, top. We're not trying to varnish the top, we're just partially sealing the grain. So this is just going to soak in. Uh, this grain is un un unbelievable, it's got this 3D effect. So. Now I'm not going to do the legs, the legs will just be straight moisturiser. The um, top is what I'm interested in. We have the oil applied. Now we don't want it to look all glossy like this, unless you want glossy like this, but this is pretty amazing, this top. And you can see where it's absorbing and all that, which is what we want. Now, let's say when we stripped and flushed it the other day, that um, the colour was lighter than we wanted, and we wanted to add some colour to it. Um, what I could have done is one, added the stain, got a tin of our stain, this is a spirit stain, and what we could have done is applied this directly to the wood uh, um, before we put this oil on, and then it's what I call direct colouring, and we've got um, tutorials on that online. Um, we could have put that straight on and then locked it into the wood with the semi-sealer and that is a, a quite a direct colouring system so if you want something to be quite dark brown or red or something like that, that you go that way. However, if I wanted to add a bit more colour to it in a more subtle way, I would add this stain to the oil. So I put a little bit of this, about 5-10% into the oil and this is a spirit based one, when it says NGR it means non-grain resin, it's a spirit based stain, so we put some of this into the oil, we brush this on and then it, it, it's a nice subtle way of adding colour where it doesn't look obvious, it doesn't look um, deliberate, uh, it looks almost like it was real. Now, but in this case I like the colour it was when it was stripped and so I left this out. We leave this on for 10 minutes and in that 10 minutes, what's happening is it's absorbing in, as you can see. This is particularly good. Again, it's, I saw it before, and it's going in more and more and more. And we do not want to leave this on the, um, we don't want to leave this to dry. This will dry over a couple of days. And the last thing we want to do is, where people go wrong with Danish oil and those types of finishes, is they, they put it on, and they treat it like a polyurethane, where they just leave it to dry, and they mess the whole thing up. Um, any finish based on tongue oil is basically a rubbing oil. So you get another donated towel and, and somewhere in five to ten minutes we're actually going to take the surplus off and this is what we do. So we basically, something of reasonable size because you want the absorbency and you are going to take off some of what you put on. So we, this is going to be rubbing oil into the grain, which is good, but we're going to take surplus off. So we'll do this a couple of times over. This is an ideal way of finishing finish. You, you often go to a lot of trouble stripping something, preparing something, and then you get your polyurethane out and with the best of intentions you put all the finish on and all that happens is you get bits of dust, land in it and settle in. 
when it's all dry, you've got these little bits you've got to pick off, and it's always a bit of a disappointment. When I stripped it, there's the odd little mark on the top that we've left there. It's all part of its character, and it's got its little stories. A lot of factories that use oil burn down because of the um, oil. As it dries, as the oil in the rag dries, it, it creates heat, and they call that polymerizing. And as the heat um, is created, it can't escape. So it builds up and builds up until it self combusts. Now, what you do, it's a really easy workaround. One, you put it in the fireplace, if you've got a log burner or something like that, and that gets rid of that. What I do is I go and hang this on the washing line, okay? And it just naturally dries, and it's fine. So it's really, really simple, but you've got to know that you do not discard these rags um, into, a, into a bin. Anyway, this top is now been semi-sealed and it now needs two days to cure. The oil is going to dry and the top is smooth and now if a little bit of dust lands on the top, it doesn't matter, it's not going to stick. So it's not meant to look beautiful at this point, it's the oil that's gone into the grain is uh, going hard, all the fibres are being um, locked up, but it's still going to be absorbent for when we come back um, and do the moisturising at, in our, at our next session. What we've done is we've partially sealed the timber with the semi-sealer and it makes a better glow for the uh, moisturiser. So this is our moisturiser and there's a picture of me and our famous diamond door. Put some in the bowl. Moisturiser is non-toxic so you can use it on chopping blocks, on bowls, on anything where food might come in contact. Not particularly tasty, but it, um, it is non-toxic. This table is going to drink it up. We want to just let the wood absorb what it wants. I like calling it a living finish. It's like skin care for wood. You can put the moisturiser on in any weather. And I can literally pour a bucket of dust over this and it's not going to upset the finish in the slightest keep an eye on the wet reflection. The, um, you'll see parts of it that will just disappear. It'll look like you've almost forgot to put it on. It'll absorb in. And what you'll do is put more moisturizer on those parts. You can't over moisturize it. You don't have to brush it out all perfectly. You don't have to go along with your brush and do that sort of thing. You're just slapping it on. Don't worry about messing up the finish. So over here where I pre-did it, it's getting thirsty already. So this is going to look tip top. So nice massage helps it go in. And now George is going along with the cloth to he's now removing the surface. We get ourselves a long piece of cloth and we just simply are going to be doing a ropey thing. So the main um, focus of today is the top. I just want to quickly show you what we would do on the leg. The level of glow or shine or whatever you're going to get is all about the sand. If you have a real coarse, sometimes people think a good quality sand is 120 grit, which in my world is, is just getting started. Um, the more, um, the, the finer the sand, the more reflection you get. The, the lights hit and reflect. Um, the coarser the sand, the less reflection you get. So a lot of this is about um, making sure the wood was well sanded to start with which because I actually made the table, it was extremely well sanded. Um, and um, what we, we do is we do what we've been showing you. The semi-sealer has helped uh, with the glow. Um, the moisturizer's on and George has just stuffed it off. So technically, we're done. That is a moisturized surface. And you just feel this grain, just like silk. And everybody likes silk. You can keep putting more and more moisturizer in. There's no limit to the amount of moisturizer you put on. If it doesn't go in, then you, you buff it off. 
but over time it will just get better and better and better. Maintenance. So this table is now finished, you can now put it into use. Effectively this is water repellent. The water, if you drop water on it, it beads off. So you use it. Um, I want to show you how we would maintain it. If, you, if you've um, had a party and for some reason there's a watermark got onto it, what you do, get some, a, a rag, get some water and you just buff the mark. Nine times out of ten, mark's gone. Do not use furniture polishes on this. Don't go off and buy um, some commercial uh, furniture polish. It's likely to have um, silicone in it that will really uh, hurt the finish. It will go into the wood and then you will definitely get heat marks. And all you do with this finish is wash it. So basically lukewarm water out of the, um, out of the tap, maybe a drip or two of detergent and just wash it. Just give it a wipe over like you're washing, you know, like you're cleaning the bench. But if it's looking a little bit um, sad because you're like really hammering it, then all you do is buff, uh, brush on some more moisturizer straight over the old. It doesn't matter how often you've done it. There's no build up because the moisturizer never dries. Remember it's this living finish. You would leave that on overnight and buff it off the next day. Once you put it on, if there's a, um, is, if there was a watermark or some sort of mark there, um, you can give it a quick scrub with the grip pad, but generally they'll just disappear on the spot. So like I say, you don't, when you use a lot of um, oils that dry, um, if you were putting it on lots of times, it would build up um, where it's getting high, where it would, it would all get out of kilter and need to be stripped. This will never need to be stripped again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Cheers.